What's up, yo? Welcome back to the channel, Better Call Saul. Season 5, Episode 3. This one is called The Guy for This. For this. For this. Not for that. For this. Things are getting very, very, very interesting I right now. I love this show so much. It is getting really, really, really close to Breaking Bad timeline mm -hmm. because... I had to go back and kind of check my timelines and check my characters and relationships and all this shit. But in the last episode, Crazy 8, we learned how he gets the name Crazy 8, which is really fun, by the way. I love that, yeah. As soon as the cards were being dealt, it was like... <laughs> but I, you know what? Damn near everything gets explained. Like, there's nothing left behind. Yeah, totally. Like, the show is just, in terms of connecting the dots, is, is what makes Better Call Saul so great. Because... They don't have a lot of flexibility in terms of their storytelling, connecting it to Breaking Bad, because it's a prequel. They have a lot of shit they got to make sure lines up, and it's been flawless. It's like, excellent. It's amazing. And the last episode, talking about Crazy 8, we see him kind of... <laughs> he gets arrested for... Now, this is one of those things that's going to upset a lot of folks, but damn it, Saul. His actions, domino effect... Cause those kids to go crazy with the 10, yep. the order of 10, yep. which caused a problem because it got stuck in the drain pipe, which then caused Crazy 8 to show up there to get it all sorted out, mm -hmm. which ended up getting him arrested. Dominoes. Yep. One action led to another. And, you know, it's really ironic because Saul's like, it's not like I'm going to be promoting people to cause crime. Well, no, no, not at all. It's exactly, at what, all. It's exactly what's happening, which is fascinating. So, if y'all don't remember, and this is why I love the comments so much, oh because God. it refreshes a lot of memories. Love you guys. Crazy 8 works for the cops. He works for the DEA as an informant, and I'm going to imagine we're going to see all of that play out. I hope. One way or another. That because would be amazing, because again, nothing left. I mean, they don't leave anything out. Right. They, they wrap it all up. Yeah, and I, I had mentioned Jesse either last episode or one of the previous episodes that like it would be dope to see Jesse at some point just like wandering around in a crowd or doing something like within like the spots that we know we, he hangs out in and I, I think we're I really believe like I don't know how they're going to pull it off or if anything like we don't have to hear from him we just could like Maybe see a like, dude see in the, the background back something. something but the fact that Crazy oh, 8 I love that. yeah the fact that Crazy 8 I don't know how long it's going to take for this to play out becoming an informant Working with Emilio, who's Jesse's partner. <laughs> Emilio! Uh, Emilio! That's, that's your thing. Um, like, I feel like it wouldn't be a crazy thing to see Jesse at this point in this show. So it all dope. lines up. We're all in the same universe, obviously, and now we're really starting to, like, put shit together. Like, this puzzle, it's really big, but it's really coming together. Like, that whole storyline is fascinating. And Lalo, this dude does not trust Crazy 8. He immediately questioned, he's like, has this dude ever been inside before? And it's like, and Nacho immediately knows, no, 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 it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. And he's just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, nah, mm. he ain't he ain't buying it. And something else we're going to talk about with Gus, I'm going to acknowledge a comment because, it, and again, brilliant comment, really interesting thing to kind of think about and ponder on. But Gus used a little bit of fear and a threat of killing Nacho's dad, that poor man. Like, honestly, the dude just wants to like do he's his been job. Through enough. Like, so he uses fear to kill him, to get Nacho to be like, I need to know what this dude's up to. I need to know his moves before he makes them. You need to get close to him. You need to make him trust you. And he does that crazy stunt, getting the drugs out of the house. But still, Lalo is a really, really smart dude. Yes. Outside of being very charismatic and kind of funny and goofy. Like, the dude is a savage. I fully 100% believe he is on to Nacho. Like, there is... Okay. <laughs> this is all going to get crazy. And now, now Saul's back in the mix with Nacho, who I assume he's going to meet Lalo. And then, like, that whole scene with Jesse and Walt out in the desert. Yes. He's like... That, That's what I'm saying. It, they wrap everything yeah, up. All like, of this stuff. Everything stuff's, makes sense. Yeah, everything's going to start connecting real soon. And I want to know what the hell goes down. Because 
like Saul in that moment was really scared. He was quite horrified. Yes. So who sent you? Yeah, and that that poor ice cream, that damn mint chip. Cone. I was gonna say something too, like right now. I was like, you know what? Don't forget about the ice cream. R.I.P. Mint chip. <laughs> That's my favorite. Can't even bring it with um, him. Yeah, seriously, he's like not in the car, yo. Uh, so that that's all really interesting. But back to Gus, real quick, and and Thor. Thank you for the comment. Really good comment. We clearly hear Gus in Breaking Bad talk about that he doesn't want to use fear as a motivator. Right. To Mike. Yeah. When we've clearly seen him use fear multiple times in this show Just, as a motivator. It, it, Gus being alive is a fear motivator and it's just like what in the hell potentially happens with gus and his methods that makes him shift off of using fear like i, I again i i think that 100 percent it's connected to nacho and i think something's gonna happen to nacho another comment i saw Can we not? At, oh. wants nacho to call the vacuum dude and get out I, I don't think they'll go to that again they've used it so many times now i i truly believe nacho's gonna die and that could ultimately be like, shit, I pushed that dude so hard to get something that I needed, and he ended up dying because of it. Or maybe maybe something happens to his dad. Like, something, I, I think something happens with Gus's methods that is definitely going to make him kind of shift on this whole, like, he's horrifying in this show. Like, he's scary in Breaking Bad, too, but his demeanor is, I feel like it's so much different in, Break, in, in Better Call Saul right. that... I think it's going to bite him in the butt somewhere. It's going to get somebody hurt. And I think it's going to cause him from shifting because, again, you had said it multiple times already, the show doesn't do anything on accident. It's flawless. The writing connects everything. And there is no way that just they're not going to shift on Gus's use of fear as motivation and then have him say that in Breaking Bad. Like, right. something's going to go down. And it's, again... This show doesn't, like, we know how most of this stuff plays out. This show does an amazing job of just you sitting here just like, oh my god, I want you more. You already know. I want more every time. Who, you know, where people end, I mean, minus Nacho. Kim, Kim and Nacho. Right. Like, you already know where they're going to end up, but you're still, like, hoping for the best or, or hoping for the worst. Yeah, it's, it's wild because... We do know the fate of a lot of people, and, and it's just, like, the desire of wanting to watch it and be so, like, on the edge of our seats about what potentially happens with these characters is just so good. And the whole relationship with Kim and Saul, it's just, that is a really tough situation. Yes. Kim doing her thing. And it seems like every time we think maybe that she's going to, like, cut ties with him... She it always kind of back it always kind of comes back because she loves him and she wants to be with him and she wants the best for him and well she's rooting for like you know the good part of Jimmy him. yeah she wants Jimmy not Saul but you know Saul's really influential dude's an amazing talker he's a lot of fun to be around and you know Kim has fun and you know she she keeps saying that she doesn't want to lie to her clients but she's done it she's probably gonna do it again. Because it almost feels like it's one of those addictions where it's like, I don't want to do it, but now that you've introduced me to this, I kind of want to keep doing it. Well, and it makes some things easier. And it makes things more interesting, probably. You know, because she had to deal with that one kid who was like, oh, I'm not going to, I want to go, I want to. Go to trial. trial. I, I could like, win. No, you don't. And so, like, she lied to him and ended up getting exactly what she needed. But, like, I don't, I, I have no idea where that's going to go. Like, Jimmy keeps doing his thing. Kim's going to keep doing her thing. And I, I feel like the whole Saul Goodman thing, and he's going to be put in a really bad spot. I think the criminal lawyer thing is where this is going to start. Right. And I'm just fascinated by all of it. Do you have any other thoughts before we jump into it? Yes. Shout out to my dentist, Dr. <laughs> Yaftali. Love her so much. Every single time I come in, how's your YouTube channel doing? <laughs> I've seen it a couple of times. And then I'd be like, oh shit, you've seen my YouTube channel. Oh my God. I say some very inappropriate things. I apologize in advance. And she's like, no, you guys are unfiltered. I love it. So Great. shout out to her and Sarah. The best dentists in the world. They are. They're so good. I love them so much. But real quick, <laughs> let's start a wild debate in the comments. What's the better show, Breaking Bad? Better Call Saul. No, I know no, this no, isn't no. done yet. I know we've got a lot left in Better Call Saul. 
Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad. Ready, go. That's not... You can't do that. You ready to jump in this episode? Yeah. It's showtime, folks. Uh, oh. It's just an <laughs> just ant. An I thought ant. it was going to be a roach. <laughs> oh, um. the ice cream. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sugar. It's like heaven. <laughs> I've climbed the mountain! He's <clears throat> going all the way to the top. Get it, boy, get it. I can see my house from here! <laughs> <laughs> he just called all of his friends. Guys, you're never gonna believe this. The party. The show even makes ants eating ice cream interesting. <laughs> are they getting stuck? <laughs> oh, okay, now that's gross. No, when they're like all, uh, mm -mm. Oh my good God. That is when it's like, ew, ew. Oh, I can't handle it. Saul's always making a mess of things. Always making a mess of things. <laughs> oh man. But ants to sugar, is that a metaphor for something? I don't know. Is that like... Saul is the ice cream, and the criminals are the ants. I think that's solid. I think he just makes a mess. True that, too. <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, uh, I'm real nervous. <laughs> oh shit. It's like, you ain't getting out of this bitch if you wanted to. No, you're not going anywhere. Is this the Lalo meeting? Oh God. Here we go. You had business with my cousin, Tuco. Tuco? Oh shit. Your cousin makes quite an impression. He has a huge heart. Tight, tight, tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Justice. <laughs> He's got a temper, huh? I hadn't noticed. Uh, <clears throat> how was your lovely Abuelita? You know, Tuco told me about you. You're the guy with a mouth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those guys at the house, what they call her? Biznatch. You know the Tuco I know? He would have skinned them alive and let the buzzards eat their eyeballs. Mm -hmm. well, there you were. You go blah, blah, blah. And they walk out of there. I mean, it's amazing, really. <laughs> they wheeled out, actually. We got something you can do for us. Yeah, we got a legal problem. For a minute there, I thought I was going to be swallowing condoms filled with heroin. <laughs> Fucking don't put that idea in their head. Maybe later. Maybe later. Maybe later. <laughs> we have a guy sitting in MDC. We need our friend to tell the cops some things. The cops can't know what's coming from us. So we send you in there, you tell them how to do it, and they can't listen. That's flattering. Uh, you're the guy for this. Yep, there it is. My rates have gone up. Uh, so going this way, it could be expensive. How expensive? It's like seven, eight, nine hundred, uh, twenty-five dollars. <laughs> sure. Does he like pull out exact change? He's like, here's ten. <laughs> right. For your trouble, let's make it eight. <laughs> cool. Oh man. Okay. Then. <laughs> oh my god. So, Jimmy! <laughs> what did you get yourself into? Fuck. Oh, we didn't talk about Mike. Uh, snapping at his granddaughter. Really bad. But also, I mean, I feel bad for both of them. You see that? You want to do something for me? Take it down. There's a third from the bottom. Oh. Customer send these in. Take it down. Sorry, mate. Take it down. I think you've had enough. Take it down now. Dude, the Werner thing is really eating him hard. This show does such an amazing job 
making us as the viewer feel sympathy for for him for anyone they, they write so well but the dude murdered him yeah and it's like the way he's written oh shit Rick, where you going yo got 20 bucks you can lend me uh, don't be scared i ain't gonna bite is he gonna shoot all these dudes I got a lot more than 20 bucks, asshole. Oh, shit. Okay, you a little too long to talk to Oh, my to God. Like Hold up, Gramps. <gasps> oh! So? <gasps> oh, shit! Oh, fuck! <laughs> and, oh. bitch, and... Bitch! Oh my god. Holy shit. Dude, Mike is now a what? fucking gangster. Now what? Seriously. Oh my god. <laughs> oh we my god. We feel sympathy god. for him, and he's a badass. <laughs> Fuck. That was amazing. That was dope. That was dope. Tight, 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 tight. <laughs> now it's actually loose, 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 loose. Everything good? Yeah. I just realized I have all pro bono clients tomorrow, all day. What about you? Some gangster shit. <laughs> I met some interesting people. We can call them interesting. <laughs> sure. Lalo's very interesting. But you know what? Financially speaking, Saul Goodman just had his best day yet. Huh. <laughs> She's like, why? What did you do? She's not even gonna ask, huh? <laughs> nope. Good for Saul. This is... This is bad. Uh, just the... I think the whole Saul thing is just really bugging her. ¿Cómo estás, papá? What's your address? Me hizo una oferta para comprar el taller. ¿En serio? Me ofreció mucho más de lo que vale. Incluso con el terreno. ¿Y qué vas a hacer? Siempre pensé que el taller sería tuyo. Mm -hmm. He's very smart, Papa. I didn't even think about this. Ya te dije lo que tienes que hacer. Deja esto. Entrégate a la policía. Enfrenta lo que has hecho. Ni madres. Yo no voy a huir. Nice to meet you, young lady. He's a really nice man. Is that ultimately what happens to the Nacho? Oh my god. Did he just turn himself in? No, no. because he, you're, you're gonna get <laughs> shanked in jail, dude. Does he just run away? I don't think he's You're not, gonna I, get caught. I don't think Nacho has a good end. I really don't. I think it's gonna be And I feel really horribly bad for his dad. Tragic. His dad. He's such a good person. Who are you? I'm your new lawyer. I didn't call no lawyer. Lalo did. Don't worry, kid. I'm nothing but good news for you. How are you at memorization? Oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. What up, dude? Oh, Hank and Gomi, what up? God. Love it. Does Block the Throw stuff out on the exact day it expires? As the clock literally strikes midnight, Marie hands me a full hefty bag and pushes me out to the trash cans. Once I find an old can of uh, vanilla frosting, I hate that. I'm still here. You what? We were talking about expired food. I thought it was relevant. Let's get this circle jerk over with. Circle jerk. Got it. <laughs> Domingo Molina. Picked up for possession a half ounce of street grade gack. Keeps his mouth shut for the first two nights he's in here and now has an epiphany and wants to talk. Wow me. Make my tiny eyes grow wide with delight. 
I miss Tank? Give me the deets. Where the drugs come from, who the money goes to, the name of your boss, and who you report to. Okay. Is Lalo gonna use him to throw Gus under the bus? Oh! The dealers kick up the cash, right? Oh, hey. oh. Silence! Are you talking to my client without his lawyer present? And you are? Saul Goodman. I'm Mr. Molina's attorney, <laughs> and you're in violation of his constitutional rights. It's all good, man. <laughs> Uh, your client waived his right to an attorney. Well, he most certainly did not. Yeah, I did. He was dropped on his head as a child. <laughs> I want to talk. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Sounds like he does. My client is making what I believe to be a grave error. Also, showing a heartbreaking lack of faith in his attorney. And I'm not going to lie, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> We're not interested. I feel like my chain is being jerked. I'm not in a good way. What if we say it's contingent? On what? Results. If his information leads to arrests, then charges go away. <laughs> hey, <Domingo. sighs> okay. Word gets out that he's a fink. He ends up bleeding out in front of his mother's house. What? My client is not leaving here with a target on his back. Fine. We'll take care of him. Assuming this isn't one big jag off. It looked like he got out because his lawyer's a genius. You don't pass him around like a venereal disease. He's your personal CI. Okay. But it's contingent. <laughs> sure. And this better be worth it. Wow. This is... Like I said, first one's under a bridge up by Chavez Road, over Hillsdale Street. Second one's in an empty rail yard off Waldron. In a train shed. Here's a... Oh, I thought the episode wow, was ending. Good. I was like, fuck you! Wow. This is all to get Gus. Somehow. Okay. Well, somebody who wouldn't sell his property. Mr. Acker, I think you're home. Aw, oh, it's like up. <laughs> you and your family have been here since 1974, but you never actually owned the land it was on. It was leased to you by a local company. Your lease stipulates that the property owner can buy you out at any time. It was a gesture of goodwill. Mesa Verde has just increased your buyout to $18,000. That's a lot of money. I bet you with that, I could buy a big old mansion and a swimming pool. Mr. Ecker, we know. Yeah, it's don't not get a will you? I'm gonna spread my legs out like this. Why don't you give me a swift kick in the balls? That's not necessary. <laughs> you people are all the same. You're the big gun with a ponytail. Oh, bitch. Don't start that. Of you go around throwing people out of their homes. Well, not this house, sweetheart. You're one of those people that give a little money to charity every month so you can make up for all the bad that you've done. Oh. Makes you feel like one of the best rich people. I don't know how in the world you sleep at night. Give it to him, Kim. This Let him not, know what's up. This is not going to sit well with her. No. She's going to sympathize with him. No, I think she's going to give him the business. You do not get to make up your own rules. Why should you get to drag this out for seven months while all of your neighbors, every single one of them, played by the rules? A contract means something. It's the law, and it's enforceable. Deal with it. Damn, Kim. That's insane. Totes. I actually thought Kim was going to go the other way on that one. I thought we were going to go with a just build around it. <laughs> just like you want it. Assuming the dead drops are a real thing, feds are going to be on them. Feds? They're gunning for arrests. At some point, you might hear that Domingo is a snitch. You got to know he's not. You're going to have to find a different attorney for future endeavors because my schedule is just very, very tight. You made time. <laughs> Fuck, no. <laughs> uh. You will make time. Yep. Who exactly did I just set up? You don't want to know. I mean, if there's going to be blowback, I don't want to be in the middle of it. When you're in, you're in. 
Solid. Terrifying. Fucking scary. Criminal lawyer. There it is. Uh-oh. What are you doing? What are you do- It's Kim Wexler again. I'd really like another word with you. I feel like this is bad. This is probably bad. He seems like someone that would shoot a person for being on their property. Fuck yes! Can we start over? Say what you came to say. I went to a real estate office. I found some houses I think you might like. This one's on half an acre. I know moving's a big deal. I'd like to help you out with that myself, if that's all right with you. I can take off any day this week. I knew she was gonna have sympathy for him. Yeah. I've never owned a house. My family never owned one either. When I was little, my mother used to shake me awake in the middle of the night yelling, it was time to go. She was always one step ahead of the landlord. I'd throw my things in a cardboard box and run outside in my pajamas and bare feet. Sometimes it was so cold, my, t my toes turned blue. You'll say anything to get what you want, won't you? Dang. She's actually being genuine right now. Damn, dude. I feel defeated for her. He thought she made that shit up. I mean, maybe she did. I don't even know now. I don't think Kim would make that story up. She offered to pay with it out of her own pocket. Oh, shit. When was this? Today. I do have the agent's names. The lawyer's got them. What are you doing? Shutting them down. Put it away. Oh. You want to leave the money for the feds? If there's no money in those dead drops, Lala will know someone talked. The dead drops remain. This is a really fascinating chess match we have going on here. It's more like a pissing match. Who's gonna win, man? Who can pee farther? Well, we know Gus isn't better, isn't Breaking Bad. And Lala yep. is not. So. <laughs> And neither is Nacho. <laughs> is that their way of basically being like, we're cool. Yep, it's been a shit day. <laughs> what are you doing? No, 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 no. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I understand it. But now you're wasting beer! I'm like, dude, you're still gonna get kicked out of that place. Yep, you're waking everybody up. Don't think that just because they turned on their lights they didn't know who it was. <laughs> it always leads to her doing something naughty. I don't like that. Oh man, what a... Dude, what a fucking episode. Crazy. Hank and Gomi are back! I know, crazier. I mean, you had to have kind of known that they were going to show up at some point with the way this shit was going. Honestly, I didn't really think about them because, I mean, R.I.P. Yeah, I know. It's sad. Still one of the more brutal deaths in almost any show we've watched. Totes. Um, but, <sighs> I, I don't get me wrong, I love seeing them. I just, I didn't even think about them. It's wild. It's wild that that played out so quickly. Like, Crazy 8 immediately just made the deal. Like, it's immediately like, oh, now he's an informant. Like, it's boom, done. Yeah. And how the... What the hell happens? I, I mean, okay, so, like, Lalo has this whole thing set up to get Gus. Nacho is telling Gus. You can't... The dead get drops rid are staying. The dead drops. 
So Gus is then losing all that money. But Lalo's now the DEA is completely in on it. Like they didn't know that it exists. Right. But now Lalo is costing Gus a whole fuck ton of money, right? I mean, because they have to find the money. Seems like who's going to get arrested from this? Because there needs to be arrests. <sighs> like if if I was Lalo, I'm gonna watch your fucking back, dude. Because Gus is going to be pissed. Yeah, and it's like I don't think Crazy Eight. I think Crazy Eight gave just enough information without giving away too much information. I think that was the right, whole obvious the whole plan. Point. So it's like, obviously he didn't give away Gus or any of that shit. No. But it's like, who... Not directly. Like, it feels like Gus is now going to have to, like, sacrifice somebody. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's... Oh. Does he have to sacrifice Nacho? Is that what happens to Nacho? Oh, I... I don't know. This is Nacho story. I mean, unless, like... I mean, we don't know what happens with, like, Tyrus or Victor between now and when we see them in well, we Breaking Bad. Well, we all know what happens to Victor. I mean, but they're both in Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. So we don't know if it's like, hey, take a deal, just take a dive, get locked up for a little bit, don't reveal any information, and then they get out. Oh, okay. like. Because it's basically what happened with Tuco. Like, Tuco got locked up and then he shows back up. Like, people could get arrested in the show and then show back up later, obviously. Like, I wonder if, like, Gus sets up this really grand plan about, like, all right, guys, we need to take one for the team here and, like, make this work in terms of, like, thinking long term, not short term. Like, I wonder if that's ultimately We've where this goes. We've all learned about our short term and long term games. Yes. Life lessons. So I wonder if it's something like that, or does Gus find a way to turn this around on Nacho, and this is ultimately Nacho gets completely fucked, and Lalo ends up kind of getting, like, as a part of it, Lalo ends up getting fucked as well. Like, I don't know. Well, as Hank I, said, it's a big old circle jerk. I so. can guarantee you one thing. I'm probably wrong, and whatever they do in the show is going to be amazing. Oh, 100%. But... This is so fascinating now. Because Lalo may not directly know, but I guarantee you this dude has suspicions that there's a lot more going on behind his back than is being you like... Can't, you can't be in this business and not have suspicion. There's no way he trusts Nacho, even after being really impressed with his antics in the last episode. Or maybe he does. I don't think so. I, 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 but it's like one of those weird things. It's like, maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. I think that's what's so fascinating about this show is because now we're dealing with some major characters. Lalo is a major character now. Nacho has been for a little bit now. Yeah. And we have no clue what happens to them. No. All we know is that something happens that fucking makes Saul horrified of them. Or at least of Lalo, for the most part. Well, like, I mean, he is just terrifying. So, just the way he's like, oh, I'm busy. He's like, you'll make time. It's like, yes, sir. <laughs> like, fuck. You're not going to argue with me. <laughs> and just the way he approaches it. He's just like, there's so much confidence in the way he speaks. He's like, oh, I, I can't be your lawyer going forward. I, I'm just so booked. He's like, you'll make time. It's like, that's not a question. Yeah, you're not out. That's you're not, not a, going anywhere, That's sir. not a question. It's not a suggestion. It's the law. Yep. It's like, you will make time. That's, yeah, it's not a request. It's a demand. Just like Nacho said, you're in, you're in. You become a criminal lawyer. This is it. This is it. Anyways. Oh, man. This is so good. This whole, like, this is... This is exactly what I wanted from this show when we knew we were going to watch a prequel to Breaking Bad. We're getting so much backstory and all of it fits so perfectly and the story is so well told that you literally like, I want to keep going. This is obviously we can't because it's a weekly show now, 
But it's literally a situation where that was a 55 minute episode and it didn't feel like a 55 minute no, episode. No, it felt like five minutes. Like this is like, definitely a show you can binge watch. It's like more, more. Yeah. This is so great. I need to know all the things right now. And the story, like Mike, Mike is just so broken right now. And he was at the bar seeing the, the, the picture that him and Werner were talking about. And he's like, take it down. He's getting angry about it. Bartender's like, all right, bye. I don't want to piss off Mike. Well, and he this, said, please. But he was like, he was very firm in his tone. And then this fool practically was about to get jumped by these six dudes. No, uh Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Mike didn't give a fuck. I thought he was going to shoot them, gonna to be honest. I'm just going to separate your uh, arm from yeah. your body. Yeah. The one dude attacked. Mike's like, uh uh. <laughs> and freaking ripped the dude's arm out of its socket. Oh, uh, the sounds, the crunching, the ripping. It, Mike is probably one of the more fascinating characters in all of television. Because he's one of those guys, kind of said it during the episode, and we've said it probably a million times with him. But he's as bad as everyone else in this show, in this universe. Yep. But because we see him interacting with his granddaughter most of the time in a really fun, playful way... We we see and hear his stories about the way his son was murdered. Yeah. Like, we see him as a person and, a like, a human. And, like... With the, compassion. Right. The relationship that he had with Werner. And we knew how much that killed him to have to go take him out. But if he didn't, he probably would have been taken out. And it's like... Now we see him just handle his shit like the way he did in this episode like he's a total badass he's so sympathetic at the same time he's a straight cold-blooded murderer <laughs> like it's so crazy how you have sympathy for a character like that it's just it's just so well done yep I agree. so well done do you have any other thoughts about this episode no do you have emojis yes okay so they're a little out of order but you get the gist so there was no beer bottles but we have a Beer, beer glass with the foam on it. Causing problems. You know, waking making up a mess, the neighbors. Making a mess. Littering. Lots Don't of messes. Uh, the next one, there was no fences for the, you know, Kim's Mr. A Acker. For his house being blocked off. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have a wall. <laughs> yeah. A brick wall. You get the point. You get the gist. Yeah. You know? Uh, for Hank and Gomi, we have a police officer. Welcome yeah. back, fellas. Welcome yeah. back. It's nice to see you. And then finally, since we missed out on the last episode. Yeah, we didn't do an ice cream cone. Yeah, duh. We have an ant. Yes. Yeah. Cleaning so, up another mess. Exactly. Mm hmm There you go. All the things. All right, so what are the emo emojis? We have a, a beer glass. A wall, a police officer, and an ant. All right, y'all. There are the emojis for this episode. Leave them down in the comments below. We absolutely love seeing them. And as always, share your thoughts. Like, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. We'll see y'all later. Have a good one. Bye. 